Daguerreotype photography is one of the earliest forms of photography available to buy that was successful. The photography before the Daguerreotype was almost non-existent. The first photo was a photo of a barn from a window. It was grainy, you couldn't tell what the picture's of, and it took eight hours of exposure time. The most of the early photography pictures weren't shown to the public. The Daguerreotype was clear and you could tell what was in the photo. It was revolutionary at the time and insanely cool. It was invented by Louis Jacques Mondaguer, an artist from France, and Joseph Nicephore Nieps, who took the world's first picture. The most likely reason that Daguer wanted to develop photography is because he was an illusion artist. And in its own way, photography is a type of illusion. The daguerreotype was released in 1839. About halfway through the process, the process of inventing the daguerreotype, in 1833, Nieps died, and Daguerre had to finish the, on his own, which is why it's named the daguerreotype. In 1840, photographic studios started opening and taking daguerreotypes. When the daguerreotype started appearing, people feared it because it was pretty much magic. To push those fears aside, photographers took daguerreotypes of the famous. Unfortunately, the, fam the daguerreotype was expensive, so only rich people could afford it. The daguerreotype was most popular for portraits, though there were some who made daguerreotypes of still objects or scenery. In the portraits, people didn't smile partly because they had to stay still for a long period of time due to the exposure, and partly because smiling was considered a sign of immaturity. So if you wanted to be respected, you didn't smile. The daguerreotype itself is made on a copper plate, polished and buffed, then coated with silver iodide, which would give the plate a yellow tinge. It is then put in the camera obscura. The picture is taken by removing the lens cap for a certain amount of time to get the right exposure. During this time, the photo subject cannot move. It can range anywhere from 5 seconds to 15 minutes, depending on the lighting. Once the picture is taken, the plate is taken out of the camera obscura, then fumed with mercury, and made permanent by a fixing solution made of salt. To protect it, the finished daguerreotype was then put in a case to set somewhere, prop up, or carry with you. The daguerreotype cost about $350 per plate, so now... $100, and that was just the plate. To get a daguerreotype taken, it would cost you about $2 then, and now $57.14. The camera used to make the daguerreotypes were made by opticians, instrument makers, or the photographers themselves, though that was rare. That was rare. The cameras that were the most uncommon had a box that would slide into the back of another larger box. The plate was placed into the small box, which slid into the larger box. The plates that the daguerreotype would be made on came in different sizes as well. You could get a photo on the whole plate, the half plate, the quarter plate, the sixth plate, the ninth plate, or even the sixteenth plate. However, the bigger your plate, the more you pay. When they started the project of the daguerreotype, I don't think Daguerre and Nieps realized that what they would making, what they were making would change the world forever. Because of what they started, and as photography was developed over time, we've integrated it into our daily lives. We now have photo galleries, it's normal to see pictures on the walls of a house, and we have cameras on the, our phones. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This is I'm Not Funny, and you just watched my last video. Bye!